the madness is not only happening on the court, it is happening on the baseball field as the World Baseball Classic has really taken the imagination of the sports fan this early spring. And we are here to talk about the ups and downs of this tournament here on the Sports Cubicle. It's the marvelous one, Dan Marver. It's Devin Tingle. It's Paul Shavari. I'm Mike Mercado. And as we are getting ready as of this recording to see a wonderful matchup between Puerto Rico and Mexico, Japan already in the semifinals along with Cuba. We'll see if the United States or Venezuela follow suit. And there has been some amazing moments both culturally from the fan bases, all these different ethnicities and teams meeting in China and Japan and Miami out West. This has been a wonderful time and we have seen great moments on the field, triumphant moments and some heartbreaking ones recently with Edwin Diaz. And we're going to talk about all of that right now, because while everything has been really about March Madness the last few days, this has been the spotlight of how much fun we are having in the world baseball classic and with the new season, new rules coming around in Major League Baseball, Paulie, I want to throw it to you first. The World Baseball Classic kind of taking the storm, the imagination of baseball fans and outside of the bubble, your initial thoughts of what has been a really, as of this point, successful World Baseball Classic and what has now been a, a kind of a really sour moment of Edwin Diaz, what we'll get to in just a moment, but your initial thoughts of the WBC this year. I think it's been probably the best tournament they've had so far, just with all of the the better athletes that that have uh, shown up. You know, in years past, I, I recall teams just, you know, there's certain star players that you were wondering why they weren't playing. And you looked at the USA roster in the first couple of classics. You'd look at that USA roster and you're like, well, we're not going to show up at this tournament, you know, the likes of Japan putting up who they're putting up. So I think now that the U S is taking it a little bit more serious and that's obviously the country that's going to be kind of running the show here. It's where the game was invented. Um, I think it's a better tournament than it was before, but I think it's also just a good tournament in general to remind people every few years, um, the different types of, uh, what do you want to call it? The, the cultures, you know, you get to see everyone's cultures on display, especially with like the games played in Tokyo and the games played, um, even in the United States, but with Latin American teams, you see just, you know, baseball can be enjoyed in many different ways that we just don't get to see normally at a major league baseball game. Marvelous. You are somebody who is always been a, a, a fan of the beauty, the old schoolness of the sport. And it's something that you yourself, myself, Paulie, Devin have talked about kind of the new guard of baseball coming around. I wonder what your thoughts have been as a Cub fan seeing this new Cubs regime, this new roster kind of come together. But before we get to that main dish, that is the 162 game season, this kind of like awesome at, uh, appetizer or maybe even a dessert that is the World Baseball Classic. What have been your initial thoughts of the world tournament? I think it's, it's interesting to see the, the players from the various countries, you know, who are on some cases on the same team playing against and the major leagues playing against each other. I mean, you're going to have Puerto Rico and Mexico tonight, and you'll have some of that in Miami, and, and, and then tomorrow the Team USA against Venezuela. It'll be interesting to see if Team USA can, can get to the semifinals because that's going to be a challenge for them. Japan and Cuba are already there, as we know. And um, that means the, uh, the, the, then on Tuesday, uh, there'll be uh, the two semifinal winners will battle. So it's getting down near the end here now. It's, I'm just wondering, too, how, how this will affect, uh, you know, the – they, the spring training is a little bit disrupted for these players and the season's starting in like a, a little over a week. So that's another thing I'm wondering about how that will affect the players that played a lot more in spring training type atmosphere than they would have in a normal spring training season. Paulie, we're going to get to you in a second about the impact that the World Baseball Classic has had in the actual MLB season we're going to have upon us in just a few weeks at this point, just so over a week. Devin, though, You've seen this, some awesome games, some underdogs have won. There have been some awesome stories with Italy and Israel, not just, you know, the, the power teams that we see normally in the WBC. What have been your thoughts? You know, some White Sox represent, representation around the entire WBC. What have been your thoughts of, the, of this cool tournament? Well, obviously, you know, Tim Anderson is America's shortstop right now. We really cannot deny that. I'll give two you know what's what Evan says here, and he's definitely earned his keep there. And I'm also surprised seeing guys like uh, Mankata play much better in this than he played in regular season the White Sox. I don't want to get into that, though. 
I'm definitely enjoying this though, because it's like, Oh, we have spring training baseball, which has all these new rules and stuff right now, which are, uh, I'm getting used to, I don't want to say I hate them, but they're, they're, they're definitely kind of, you know, messing up how the game feels watching. I'm pretty sure Paul Asius could comment a little more on that, but this just, you know, it's better than spring training. This actually is some baseball that means something in the middle of March right now here. So, you know, it gives baseball fans something to watch. And you're actually, you know, you're invested. You know these players. You're not like, oh, hey, maybe this guy will be on the team. Maybe he'll be bagging groceries next week. Who really knows? I personally have loved just the entire story that is the world. The presentation, the drama that is it, the idea of, like, anybody from any part of the country getting to this moment. It's what we love about the Olympics. It's what do we love about the World Cup. It's what we love about these type of international competitions where you get to see people from all different walks of life. And more than anything, you get to see like who you get to claim like, Oh, I didn't know this guy was from, you know, check, you know, from uh, 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 his ancestors could go back to Greece, you know, like things like that, like craziness that I had no idea that this guy can go play for Puerto Rico, for Japan and for the United States. Like that is some of the, the cool factor to it. Getting to see how people celebrate and play the game that is called America's pastime. But to see the passion that the Japan fans have, that the, you know, uh, uh, Latin countries have, like, it's just, there's so much you don't get to see in everyday baseball when 81 games in Chicago and then 81 games on the road, you don't get to see this. And that's what does make it really special. What does is unfortunate is just a fact, the things that can happen, like we saw in that Puerto Rico win with that just horrible injury to what is a, you know, a, a popular player, Paul and I have talked about this, a good player, somebody who's kind of taking fame because he plays for the Mets and that whole intro. But this was something that owners are worried about. But if you listen to the players, they want to be in this tournament. Edwin Diaz said it himself, that this means a lot to them. So I can understand both sides of the impact, good and bad. But, Paulie, what do you think about the impact the World Baseball Classic is going to have Come the regular season, of course, if you don't know this, if you're a fan of the sports cubicle, the one and only Paul Lee Dangerous, Paul Shavari has the podcast, the Baseball Weekend Journal. He's breaking all this stuff down all the time. And, you know, it, it's great that we have him and Marvelous to kind of break this stuff down. But, Paulie, what do you think about the, the lasting impact of this season's WBC? What what specifically, like, uh, during the season? What You have a starting what a, a major – you have yourself uh, just a few days ago – one of the major closers that impact to a team that has world series, a uh, uh, world series thoughts and, and aspirations lose him like that, that the lasting impact of what can be the world baseball classic this year. Oh, I got you. I got you. Okay. So yeah, in terms of like Edwin Diaz and the Mets, like, yeah, you can replace a closer, but that's, that's pretty big. You know, it'd be a lot bigger if it was a position player. Um, you know, I think we have yet to see what the, the implications are going to be. Cause I, I still think that, you know, couple that with the pitch clock, you know, how are pitching arms going to be affected overall? Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think I'm with you in the sense that, you know, you're, you're expelling uh, big innings on your arms. This isn't just like, you know, trying to groove in a new pitch that you're trying out in spring training. This is like, you know, reaching back and, and, and competing like it's the world series in March. And, and I'm sure some of these guys have been training kind of for this, but, but yeah, you're right. Six months from now when it is October and it means something for the major leagues, how are some of these guys going to be affected? And I think pitching wise with the clock and the, the WBC, I, I think we're going to see that, that, you know, be it, be an effect, however it shows up. Well, you've brought it up before. And I think it's a great point when you see Shohei Otani out there and all over social media, because he's doing amazing things and players from different countries want to take pictures with them because they were able to strike him out. You know, I think it's you bring up a good point many times before, whether it's been on the podcast on this show, that it's also good for the game to have your superstars out there like the dream team. You know, it's different now where you have stars all over from the different points of the countries to be out there and see them do special stuff to have Mike Trout out there having amazing moments with Tim Anderson. And then you have Moncada and Soto and all these guys all over representing different countries. I think it's a, it's a point to that needs to be noted how important of an image that is. To You're absolutely right. That we're all worried about. You're absolutely right. But let's, let's not mistake one thing though. You know, yeah, they're putting Mike Trout and Shohei Otani out there. Who has FS2 as a network on yeah, there? Good point. You know, how, can, can everybody access that easily? I, I don't know. I know it's on Fox Sports, but I know not every, you know, chances are if you are watching it through the app on Fox Sports, you either, 
are pirating from someone you know that has a cable package or you have a cable package or satellite package yourself. So I don't think they're doing a good job of growing the tournament. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, but, but I do think the tournament, you know, you and I have talked about this a lot, Mike, about major league baseball doesn't really do a good job of promoting itself. And I think here's another example, because I want to say major league baseball has a heavy hand in this tournament and, and, and whether they're the ones running this or not, or how much of an impact they have on it. And, and I know Fox probably ended up with the deal, but it's like, okay, they're going to be fortunate that the only two games that were on Fox happened to be a U.S. team, but maybe that was more the way the tournament was set up because the United States were supposed to be, you know, if, if they would have uh, won the division, they'd be playing on Friday night on FS1, but they ended up runner up in the division. So they end, or in the pool. So they end up on Saturday on Fox. I don't know how much of an impact that's going to make, but I'd like to think that if you put it on a bigger network, you're probably going to get more fans coming to it. Or if it was on ESPN or if it was, you know, front and center on FS1 or a channel that people watched, you know, but I think most of these games are on FS2 and some of them are on at like five or six in the morning, which I get because they're across the world. But I I think it could have just been better coordinated overall, you know, in, in terms of trying to grow the game, because I think the product sells itself. And I think, you know, because the Olympics can't, um, you know, ever have the Major League Baseball shut down, you know, to have the best of the best play in the middle of the summer, not in the United States or wherever the Olympics are being held. um, You know, I I think this is the only chance you get of seeing how it breaks down. Now, of course, there's like really loose rules behind it. Like, uh, you know, there's certain guys like Lars Newtbar I didn't even know had any Japanese heritage in him. You know, so it's, you know, it's, it's a little different than... I know the Olympics kind of has, has that, that loose sort of, you know, were you really from this country or yeah. are we, are we going back, uh, you know, deep in the bloodlines to, uh, to connect you to it. Um, but at the same time, I, I do think it, it grows the game. It rallies up people. It's neat to see the different configurations and collections and sets of players. And there's always the risk anytime there's competition. And, and I think, um, you know, soccer could look at baseball fans right now, any baseball fan that's like, Oh, they shouldn't shut down the season. You know, there's the risk of injury. It's like, hello, you call us crybabies, you know, and our, our whole thing is centered around the World Cup every four years. And, and I know the, the World Baseball Classic is nowhere near, you know, as exciting as the World Cup or meaningful as the World Cup. But I think at the same time, this is a chance for the game to really grow on a global stage and, and maybe even rival the World Cup in terms of its importance to the sport. You're here on the Sports Cubicle. It's the marvelous one, Dan Marver, Devin Tingle, Paul Shavari, myself, Mike Mercado. We are breaking down what has been a very fun atmosphere, what has been a really cool tournament, but has had some ups and some downs equally. And I think we are just trying to break this down as what is going to be the new normal, hopefully, of the game growing in. Marvelous, I wanted to throw it to you. Marcus Stroman playing for Puerto Rico, and he was somebody who was on Team USA before, and now we're seeing him in uh, Team Puerto Rico. But more importantly, I think to people listening to the show, he's the, one of the Cubs' main players in this hope for the, the turnaround in this rebuild. Do you have any worries or can you understand where some of these players are coming from that want to go play in the world baseball classic that want to make it like the men's Olympic basketball team, like the women's Olympic basketball team? Where are you on that? Yeah, I'm okay on that. But again, uh, there, you know, they're going to be pitching more than they would have normally. And I don't, you know, they don't want them to overextend themselves because usually they're barely pitching, you know, three, four five innings in, in the spring training. I mean, you've got Darvishes on Japan, of course, but our buddy Baez is on Puerto Rico too. And you know, with the with the White Sox flavor, you have Robert on Cuba, so you got a little bit of Chicago flavor in some of the remaining teams. So uh, I, I think, I mean, I don't know a lot of these players. I mean, a lot of these names I've never heard of. Mexico, I, I don't know any of those names. <laughs> but uh, I think the USA is a good shot on this too. But uh, I think that the the Puerto Rico will probably go on ahead and and, and play Japan and Cuba and the USA in the semifinals. And but don't bet on that. That sounds <laughs> just, fun though. Just, just my observation. And again, I I told you about Princeton and Furman <laughs> <laughs> from Jump Street. That is why we are all going to Hawaii in just a few weeks. But Devin, you hearing all this? Uh, we could kind of wrap it up with your whole take in the lasting impact of the World Baseball Classic. You talk about America shortstop, right? That's your shortstop for. 162 games and hopefully I got to interrupt exactly. I got to interrupt because Tim Anderson's been more of America's second baseman than shortstop this Good time point. around there you go but even that being same like he's there with the other superstars and 
we'll see how it plays out for for him and the, the rest of this tournament with some interesting matchups. But when we get yeah, to April, all how is it the that the White Sox had a second baseman problem last year? Had two shortstops on the roster. Well, actually, no, they got Andrews because uh, Anderson was uh, was messing up. But it's like this whole entire time. They could have shifted Tim to second base, gotten a better shortstop than whatever they wanted to trot out at second base beforehand. And, and it took it took Mark DeRosa, who's never managed a game in his life, to do that, and not the great, glorious Hall of Famer Tony La Russa. We great. need age limits. That's, that's all I'll say. But, no, well, with that, what are, what are your thoughts about the long-lasting term of, on not just the White Sox, but Major League Baseball, especially this coming up season after WBC? Well, I I will say I think this is sort of a good and a bad thing for Major League Baseball. For people that already like baseball right now, this is great. You know, there's baseball that is better than spring training, feeling like we're redundant right here. But you're, again, you're seeing all these superstars kind of from all over the world coming together on one grand stage. It's like the Olympics, but for baseball only, and it happens every year instead of every four years. Definitely a lot better to add in. Definitely a lot better than, you know, what we've been seeing and we'll see with spring training here. But Paul brought up the best that the streaming of or just even watching some of these games is pretty, you know, a pain in the you know what to do. And right now, the people that aren't watching sports the most are people that are younger than all four of us. I'm just going to come out and say I think all of us are younger or older than the age of 18. I'm just going to take a wild stab, Marver. I know you're, you're close to 18, but you're probably over it. But and that's just the thing. If you can't watch this or stream this, how do you expect to grow the audience? You might grow a baseball audience worldwide, but, you know, uh, can you access MLB TV over there in, you know, uh, Asia and Europe? I mean, Paul could probably answer that question. But, you know, how you can really grow the MLB right now, especially in America, where you're, you know, that's your main target audiences. That's where, what, 30 of your uh, 31 of your teams play. So from what I could just tell, and this is just my science from my algorithms, it has been pretty decent for a sport that's horrible on Twitter. The World Baseball Classic has been a lot better than usual. Like they do, they've been doing a better job of showing highlights and awesome vignettes and backstories this time around than they did during the last World Series. Like they are so much better right now at building up on social media all these cool moments. You couldn't get that in the playoffs. And I'm somebody who looks for it. I don't know, Polly. I I think they're giving you more videos. You're right, more videos. But I, I thought they did a decent job with the social media, kind of keeping you in the loop of what's been happening in yeah. the the playoffs. You know, they had yeah. that like that like that they unveiled that kind of new graphic or new font style that they're doing now with like um, it's like you know like the all dark with like the white letters, kind of the way they they kind of show things. Yeah. So I mean, they rebranded in the but yeah, I mean yeah, you're right, and, and I and you can't compare it to. 2017's world baseball classic because think of how different social media was 100%. you know that long ago it, if anything maybe they were blessed that the pandemic shut this thing down in 2021 Interesting. so it kind of gave them a chance to kind of you know rethink how they wanted to present this to everybody that is a fascinating thing and the fact that we've learned since the pandemic we love brackets we love tournaments you know the nba is going to do a mid-season tournament marvel we got to talk about that someday down the line but that is gonna you know they love because there's so much money that can be built into this. There's so much sponsorship. So I think it's just inevitable that it's going to grow. And injuries come with all this. Paul George broke his leg in a scrimmage for Team USA. And then guess what? Two years later was playing for Team USA again. Because these dudes, some of these dudes are just about it. Whether it's in women's sports, men's sports, children's sports. When we get to the national, international level, it's a different breed. And there's just a different type of of, of, of confidence and ego and wants when you're representing a flag. And there is so many eyes and so much money into it. And I think you're seeing that now. Oh, no generation. And I think what's really important, everything will figure itself out. Everything will even itself out. Pendulum swings both ways. I think what's more important is that the players are kind of cool right now. They're young. They kind of hit the, the social media groove. You do the right things the right teams win and you hit a home run like you're doing right now and you have yourself a heck of a finals anything is possible the only thing is do you trust major league baseball to take advantage of it that's just something we're gonna have to see but if you're more into the details of mlb the one and only paul shivari baseball weekend journal follow him all over the universe all over his socials he's with every single one of the moments it's in his veins you can put it right there my friends that is paulie and baseball 
Thank you to the marvelous one, Dan Marver, to Devin Tingle. We want to know your thoughts. What do you think about the World Baseball Classic? Have you enjoyed the tournament this year? How do you think it's going to impact your favorite Major League Baseball team? We're on Twitter at Sports Cubicle TV. For the marvelous one, Dan Marver, it's Devin Tingle. It's Paul Shavari. I'm Mike Mercado.